one of the best nightclubs was at the Workers' Club, and there was Julian Latre, who was the most fabulous Hungarian. He had a band, and he played all that magic gypsy music, and we loved dancing to that. Tindry House was a very good accommodation where the single girls lived. We were allowed to have our friends in at night and men supposed to go at 10 o'clock, but it didn't always work out that way, especially when there was a fire. So many boys jumped out of the windows. <laughs> you know, there were a bunch of, a couple of hundred bat bachelors up there. <laughs> that was uh, very attractive for... Uh, the sex industry people there from uh, King's Cross in Sydney, of course. And uh, one of the things that we as a staff started to uh, notice was that uh, consumption of food, which we had to supply to the men's uh, kitchen, started to increase uh, beyond what was reasonable. And, and then we found out that <laughs> we had uh, that many women living in a camp, you know. The women used to come and knock on the door and they came last payday and you had something to do with them, they probably knocked on your door and said, dry cleaners here. So... <laughs> they... Have you used these raw reds before? The which? Raw reds. Raw, yeah, they're very good. They make life extremely easy. Mum and Dad were very social people. My father's family had come from Norway and would have lots of large parties for the Norwegian National Day, the 17th of May, we always had parties. And there used to be always a big party for all the drillers and field investigation staff. They used to bring the kegs of beer along and uh, we would carry glasses around and sit there and, and listen to the stories of them. And uh, it was obviously a very, very hard life uh, for a lot of them, but uh, they all seemed to enjoy it. The day is a special day in the lives of the Norwegians working on the snowy scheme. And the flags of Norway and Australia fly side by side in celebration of the King of Norway's birthday. And how better to celebrate it than out on the snowfields, so reminiscent of back home to them. I myself was uh, president of uh, Selma Ski Club, and we had cross-country competition and uh, slalom competition, and uh, the highlight was then uh, uh, jumps. The judges are ready in their box, and there goes the first competitor down the run. They built the jump for themselves in their spare time. The ski jump, we had to make it. The caterpillar were bringing the snow, and we had a long rope on, and everybody hanging on the rope with the ski, and going over and over and hitting the snow. But the jump goes on, and here's one that is sheer perfection. It wasn't just the Norwegians competing there, but we had uh, people from the local ski clubs. It got very popular, so we got an influx of people. And uh, some people had uh, never been in the snow before, and <laughs> they thought it was a wonder, you know, to come there. During the war, there were enemies on that side and on that side. When we came to Kuma and we met there, there was no enmity. The Czech didn't say, well, what you Germans did to us, or the Hungarians didn't say that. We were friends all of a sudden because we all had the same aim. Forget the war, be human beings, like one another as human beings, and show that you are civilized people. I be all wise and by the restless and the weary, find safe harbor on our shores. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The man with the salami, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you still haven't got the delicatessen, though, because I, I had a look for it the last time I was here. Go on, go on, go on, long time. Why? It was a good delicatessen. I gambled too much. Yeah, gambled away. One particular evening in one particular pub, 
and all these big guys were drinking all around me, all speaking with these German accents, if not actual German. So I just said, you sound like a bunch of SS men, you know, because I'd had a few beers and I felt brave. And they said, we are SS men, you know. I said, bull. They said, we are, and they showed me their SS signs and numbers, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, you could meet anybody of any sort. Не было, в то время не было политических э, группировок среди рабочих, только были дискуссии между рабочими. Много было австралийцев, которые очень поддерживали коммунистическую партию. Приезжали со всех уголков Австралии, не только рабочие. Были интеллектуалы, с которыми можно было очень-очень интересно говорить, от которых можно было научиться кое-чего. И результат был то, что мы были связаны. Те, кто интересовался, фактически со всем миром в Австралии. See, when you work in the tunnel, you're always exposed to some accidents. And that's where I meet my first wife in hospital. He used to come to town, always in suit, dressed up like on a Sunday. You would not dare not go in a jumper or something. Probably looked like a turkey going, in, going into town, but everybody was the same. husband at the cricket club dance. Jan was looking in the window and he was with a friend and he said, oh look, he said, let's go in. He said, there's a girl ready for bed. So uh, as it was a come in bad taste party, which wouldn't be in bad taste today, I was just in some rather nice striped pajamas, he came in and asked me to dance. He was studying engineering survey but because he was a chainman, it wasn't easy to get a house. I always remember going to the property office and asking, and she said, you must remember, it's like the army. When you marry a private, you don't have as many points, so you have to wait a while. I think I was about seven months pregnant, and I said, look, if you don't give me a house, I'm going to have the baby. I'll bring the baby and put it in the, the waiting room, in the pram, until you you know, give me a house. And <laughs> I think that must have stirred them a bit and we did get a house. When the wife had a third baby, I wanted to do something nice. Flowers was not available at Jindabai, so I thought I might surprise her with a song. I went to Kuma radio station to ask to play Russian song. Radio stations starting now and again play music in foreigner language, educating people with idea that immigrants are there. wife thanked me all the same. She didn't hear it, but she was grateful. And I was grateful they did it. And I felt that my future child might be, be good Australian. <laughs> 